last night, I wake up in the middle of the night to the sound of my dog throwing up. So on my way to fetch the cleaning supplies, I step in a pile of dog shit. I need to turn on the light, wash my feet down with soap and water, clean up the entire room. I climb back into bed and within minutes, I notice a pain in my upper digestion. This is not just any pain. This is the full blown pain that I used to have when I had massive SIBO. And the reflex of my mind says, oh my God, what did I eat? I run through the list of foods in my mind. And as my mind begins to settle, realizing it cannot be the foods. And so I think, what did I do? What did I think? How did I allow this to happen? And that's when I settled my mind and decided on meditating myself to sleep. And it was at that point that I had massive insight come to me. The pain was gone because it was then that I realized I was asking myself the wrong question. And if I was asking myself the wrong questions, I wanted to know what the right question was. And in that meditative state, the answer came to me. So if you are curious about what the right question is to ask yourself, if you're in a setback, if you're in a flare, if you're in fight or flight, if you're in chronic pain or chronic symptoms, then stay tuned because that video is coming up next. Good morning, it's Lisa with Lisa Heal Yourself. And today we are gonna be asking what question can heal my life? What is the question that's hurting me and keeping me stuck? And what question do I need to ask instead? So when things are falling apart, when you feel symptoms, when you feel the suffering, when you think you can't do it, when things are getting bad or slipping bad, or at the exact moment that you're wondering, how did this happen? Why are things going like this? Why do I feel this way? What happened? And you might start to ask yourself, like, what did I eat? Right? What was the food? What was the diet? What were the thoughts I was thinking? What are the feelings that I'm feeling? What's the environment, the outside environment? What environmental factor caused this? So we're asking what caused this, right? Was it a thought? Was it a feeling? Was it an emotion? Was it an environmental factor? Was it a food? Was it something I did? Was it something I thought? Was it something in the environment? Was it something outside my control? What happened? I know you can relate to this because if you have chronic illness, you no doubt get in these times when you're feeling a little better and then something happens, your symptoms reemerge, everything comes back. You go from having a, a better day or a good day to a bad day and you ask yourself what happened and you spend your time trying to solve the puzzle because you think, and I know this because I did it. I did this, this was what I did. If I can find out what I did that brought it from like a good day back to a bad day, if I can figure out what I ate or what I thought or what I felt or what environmental trigger, was it my cell phone? Was it this, was it that? If I can find out and figure out what it was, then I can stop doing the thing, right? Notice it's a thing that happened or caused this to happen. And if I can only find out what that thing was, figure it out, right? Solve the puzzle, I can stop doing that thing, whether it's thinking a thought or an emotion or eating a food or using my cell phone or not going to bed at a certain time or blah, 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 blah. Then I can stop having these setbacks or I can stop having these symptoms. And so I have probably asked myself this question or these set of questions in a merry-go-round fashion for years and years and years, right? This is what happened whenever I had symptoms or whenever things would rage or whenever, I mean, this is what I did. But the other night when I was lying there and I had this pain from SIBO, like a SIBO attack, which clearly I didn't have SIBO, nothing was happening. I haven't had it in however long. So it, I did, SIBO attack didn't come out of nowhere. Okay, so I thought, what did I think? What did I do? What did I eat? Like what, what happened? What happened, right? And I asked the question in a slightly different way. I said, what changed? What changed? Was it my diet? Was it my lifestyle? What happened? What changed? What changed? What actually changed to cause this change? And then it hit me. This is the wrong question. And this is why it's so hard to heal from this question. Because you are asking the question, what changed? 
did my thought change? Did my feeling change? Did something in the environment change to bring these symptoms up, to have them get stronger? What changed? What did I do? And in fact, the real question we need to be asking is how didn't I change? What didn't change? How didn't I change? How haven't I changed? Okay, so how haven't I changed? Because that's actually what's happening here. You are playing out an old pattern, an old belief system, an old illness, an old belief, an old subconscious pattern. Your body, your mind, your body, your symptoms, it is playing this out subconsciously. Why? Because you are allowing yourself to go back to the old story or the old belief or the old pattern in some way because you stopped changing or you haven't changed something that needs to be changed in order to keep you in your new identity, in your new story. So this is based on Joe Dispenza's work and his work and his courses are all about changing your identity so you are the new person. And when you are the absolute new person with new thoughts and new feelings and new belief and a new identity, the old disease, the old illness can't live inside the new being, right? If you change, then the illness changes because the illness lived in the old person, in the old beliefs, in the old patterns, in the old behaviors, in the old personality traits and in the old identity but it doesn't live in the new person, in the new identity. He wrote a whole book and more about breaking the pattern of being yourself, right? Breaking up with your old self, right? Overcoming yourself. And so this is what that means. And it dawned on me in that moment, I was asking what changed to cause this? And in fact, the question was, what haven't I yet changed? that allowed this to slip back into the old identity and let this play out. Because healing, manifesting, doing, getting anything that it is that you want means radical change. It is radical change. You don't heal if you haven't changed. You can't heal from the old person, from the old identity, from someone who hasn't changed. You have to change in order to create something new. And so in that moment, when the pain came back and the symptoms started to flood my body and I realized I was in fight or flight and fear started to take over, I habitually started to ask the old questions. What did I do? What did I eat? What changed? Because fear was driving my reaction. Fear was driving my response, right? But when I realized these are the absolute wrong questions, these aren't the questions. The question is, how haven't I changed? What am I not changing right now? Right? How am I being the old person, the old identity, falling into old patterns, allowing myself to go into fight or flight, allowing myself to ruminate all these thoughts, getting caught up in this fear cycle? And I could clearly see in that moment that I hadn't changed in that moment. Of course, I've changed. Of course, I've changed over time and that's why I have healed. But in that moment, right? Because it's holding the new person. So in that moment, I slipped out of who I am and I allowed the old fear cycle to come up. I was living in the old identity, right? I was ruminating on old questions, old thoughts. And I wasn't holding in that moment last night the change. I wasn't changing. I wasn't changing the questions I was asking. What I was doing in that moment, I was letting myself spiral instead of simply knowing that I am healed, I am healthy. I let myself fall into what if it comes back? What if, you know, I have to start all over yet again? What if I have SIBO? What if? I can't eat a certain food anymore. What if I'm doing something wrong, right? Self-blame. I was living in the old identity of self-blame. 
of control, of doubt, of victimhood. And that's what didn't change. That's what wasn't changing. And when I realized it, I changed those things. Instead of feeling like a victim, I started to remember I was a victor. I started to remember I could eat any food I wanted. I started to believe that I am healthy, I am healed, that a little pain in my stomach couldn't change that, no matter how intense it was. And in that moment, I started to change. I started to change from being in the fear cycle to remembering who I was, to living in a cycle of faith, to living in faith. I started to change those old patterns again, right there on the spot. And so when I started to ask how, what hasn't changed? How haven't I changed, right? How haven't I changed to hold the identity of a healthy, healed person? Then I could see what was at play and I could change right there in real time. It was never about the thing. We're looking up for the thing. We're looking to solve the problem and the problem is you. Your ability to hold your new identity, who it is that you are, where no illness can really live inside that person, inside the person who is fully free and healed and healthy. Disease doesn't live in that body, in that healthy body, mind, heart, and soul. It lives in the old person. So when you realize that the question is all centered around you and change, it's like, how can I change in this moment? What can I do to propel change? and growth and expansion in this moment, in this very moment, because it's at the exact very moment when your symptoms flare or when you feel overwhelmed or when you start to ask why me, or when you start to ask, what did I eat? That you need to stop and change? Because at that very moment, it's at that very moment when you think, why me? How did this happen? That you need to stop asking, why me? Why did this happen? That you actually need to change at all costs right there in that moment. And you need to do something different. You need to become and take action from a different identity, from a different person, from a different perspective, because you want to move yourself, especially in those moments, right? When you feel overwhelmed or when you feel like nothing will work, you need to stop and say, no, this is exactly when it will work. Right? You need to then repeat those affirmations. I am healthy. I am healed. It's when you're at your very lowest or you're saying to yourself, I don't think I'm ever going to heal. This isn't working. When you need to stop and say, this is working. Everything I do is working for me. I am getting healthier and healthier. I know and I believe that this is going to work. So it's at the very moment when you're saying the things and thinking the things that are keeping you stuck that you need to change right there in that moment and take the opposite perspective. You need to change over and over and over and over. And at first, yeah, you won't believe it. You won't go from somebody who is saying, right? Uh, I can't heal, I'm never gonna heal, to saying, I can heal, this is working for me, I am going to heal and believe it. But over time, over time, if you keep holding that change, if you keep holding that identity, if you keep saying that over and over and over and holding it consistently, then one day a pain will come up and it'll be no big deal. You'll just be like, I'm healthy, I'm healed. That pain is nothing, that's nothing. And guess what? It'll turn out to be absolutely nothing. But it takes practice. It's at the very moment when you say, I can't do that. I can't go for that run or that walk where you need to get on your shoes and go for that run or go for that walk, right? You need to turn the I can't, the victim mindset, the woe is me story into the opposite. You need to live from the person who is healed. Live from the person who believes that they can heal, right? You need to change. You need to change your thoughts. You need to change your feelings. You need to change your emotions. You need to change your energetic state. You need to change your beliefs. You need to change your actions. You need to take change, particularly when things are at their worst, particularly when you're reacting in all those old ways that keep you stuck, in all those old patterns that are keeping you exactly where you are, feeling the exact thing that you don't want to feel. That is when you need to change the most because nothing happens, nothing changes if you don't change. Nothing changes, nothing can and ever will change 
without change. From you, you have to change in order for change to take hold in your life. So whether you are looking to change your health, right? You're going from somebody who is sick to someone who is healed, or whether you're going from somebody who is broke to becoming a millionaire. You can't get what you want or manifest what it is that you want unless you change. You need to change your body, your mind, your heart, and your soul. You need to change on every level. You need to become the person who is healthy, who can be healthy. You need to become the person who is the millionaire, right? Who is wealthy, who is abundant. And change is scary. We don't like to change. We like to build walls around ourselves. We like to build limitations. We like to build excuses. We like to box ourselves in because we are so afraid of what it means when we change and how it feels to change. Because change means stepping outside of your comfort zone. Change means doing something completely different. Change means being vulnerable and risking falling or failing. Change is hard. Change is scary, right? We don't like to open ourselves up in case, what if? What if it doesn't work? What if we fail? What if we can't? Right? Again, all those thoughts just need to be changed. What if I can? What if I am? What if I absolutely can and will? It's when you are saying, I absolutely, you know, I can't do this, that you need to stop and say, I can do this. It's when you're asking, what food did I eat? That you need to stop and say, it's not the food. It's not the food. So when you're asking, why can't I ever hold health? You need to say, I can absolutely hold health. Or why do I never get money? I, I absolutely, money comes to me easily. This is not about lying to yourself or saying something that you don't believe. This is training yourself to believe something new. This is training yourself to believe something new and it feels awkward in the beginning because you don't believe it, but you work your way up into believing it through faith. So I promise when you are having difficult times and you find yourself in a spiral of asking questions to yourself. If you stop and ask a different question, what hasn't changed yet in me, in my own thoughts, in my own beliefs, in my own energy, in my own reactions or interactions in the world, in my own thoughts, in my own feelings, in my own beliefs. If you ask yourself what has not yet changed in me, really, I'm really get honest about what is hasn't changed yet. What parts of yourself do you still need to change in order to truly be healed, in order to truly be abundant, be the successful version of yourself that you desire to be? If you ask, how haven't I changed yet? And then you start to make those changes, then everything will begin to change. So this was a big insight that came to me the other night in the meditative state in a flash when I was experiencing symptoms when I was in a fierce cycle and everything went away and I know that it may not go away for you right away but beginning to ask these questions it is key because I spent way too long asking the wrong questions and I wish I would have had a video like this back then telling me exactly what the right question was so that I could get to work on changing what actually needed to be changed. On the real reason why things weren't changing. I wasn't changing, I wasn't healing. If you want more help, if you wanna take my program, Become Your Own Healer, which I believe is the holy grail of healing, which will put the power in your hands to heal yourself, body, mind, heart, and soul, so that all of you changes and heals. And click the link below and sign up for my program. And if you want to watch another video for free, then watch this one. It talks about how we can change our beliefs. And when you find yourself asking, why isn't this working? Ask yourself, how am I not changing instead? So thanks again for watching and I will see you in the next video.